The Hoka Mach 6, the latest in Hoka's simple and lightweight performance trainer, comes with a bunch of big changes. But the question remains, is it still a Mach? I think if you watch my content on this channel, you'll think of me probably as a Nike, maybe an Adidas guy. Some years it's a little bit more Nike, some years it's a little bit more Adidas. This year I think it's going to be a little bit more Adidas, but those are the brands I generally go back to. But this may come as a surprise, the brand I probably have the most amount of time in after those two brands would probably be Hoka. I've run a lot in Hoka's. 2017, 18, 19, 20 was probably the last time I ran in Hoka's. So four years ago, it's been four years since I ran in Hoka. In 2020, I was running quite a bit in Hoka's. Clifton 7, Rincon 2, Mach 3, even the Carbon X. I ran in the Carbon X, which was not a very fun shoe to run in. So I've actually spent a lot of time in Hoka's. But that was four years ago, and I stopped running in Hoka's because Hoka's were just kind of to Hoka. <laughs> the, the fit was very strange, very inconsistent. The foam was problematic to say the least. So I just stepped away from Hoka. But I've been watching the brand. They've gotten a lot of investment. They've made a lot of changes. They've updated a lot of things. And I was curious to kind of come back and try a modern Hoka, at least a Hoka four years later. But I've been waiting for the right Hoka. And finally, we have the right Hoka, the Hoka Mach 6. Now, as I said, I have a little experience with the Mach series. I ran in the Mach 3, and the Mach 3 was a little bit before the Mach became the Mach, which was really from the Mach 4. But I'm aware of like this simple, lightweight, faster trainer from Hoka, and that's really what this shoe is. It's always what it has been, and this was, I think, the best entry point for me to come back into Hoka. And it's been interesting, enlightening, a little bit mixed feelings, but the Mach 6 is an interesting shoe. Let's start with the specs on this shoe. We have 37 mil of foam in the heel, 32 mil of foam in the forefoot, giving you a 5 mil drop. That 5 mil drop is very Hoka. Hoka's, I think, have always been 5 mil or around 5 mil. And this feels like a Hoka with the drop. Now, the weight of this shoe is interesting to kind of figure out. According to Running Warehouse, which is where I pull all my specs from, this shoe weighs 7.4 ounces. Okay. According to Hoka, this shoe weighs 8.2 ounces, okay? According to my own weights of the brand new shoes when I pulled these out of the box, my right shoe weighed 8 ounces or 226 grams, and my left shoe weighed 7.6 ounces or 215 grams. So I'm going to say the weight of this shoe is 7.8 ounces or 221 grams. I'm just going to average everything. And that feels about right. This is a fairly lightweight shoe. You notice it on foot. It definitely likes to pick up the pace because it is such a simple, lightweight shoe, and you do definitely feel that. Starting with the upper on this shoe, the upper is the first place where this shoe really kind of says, I'm a Hoka. What do I mean by that? Hoka has always used very straight lasts in their shoes, which has always, to me, to my foot, made their fit very inconsistent and actually very frustrating. One of the reasons I stopped running in Hoka's in 2020 is I got tired of having to guess what the right size for me was. I remember the Rincon 2 fit the way I wanted it to, but the Clifton 7 was too baggy. The Mach 3 was sort of in between that, and the Carbon X was so tight, I felt like I needed to go up a full size, which I didn't. So when I went to the store and I tried on my normal US men's size 9, which is the size I am in almost every shoe, I put this on my foot and I was reminded, yep, it's a Hoka. Weird heel in that it's a little narrow, but then the midfoot of the shoe is very tight, and then the toe box is very roomy. There's a lot of room to wiggle your toes up here. Now, people have been saying this is a very narrow shoe. I don't find this being very narrow, and that's not the problem I'm having with the fit of this. I have a foot that's neither wide nor narrow, but I do have a high developed arch, and I have a high volume foot. So I'm running into the volume of the upper material, especially in the midfoot, especially at the base of the eyelet chain, is just too low. This shoe is incredibly tight in this area on my foot. I did try the 9.5. It was still incredibly tight in the midfoot now, but the shoe was way too long. So I went with the true-to-size US men's size 9. 
Now, the good thing is that this Creel Jacquard knit upper is the type of material that will stretch. And my first run in this shoe was extremely tight. In fact, six kilometers into my first run, I actually felt my big toe on the right foot kind of pins and needles. It was falling asleep. I had to stop, take the shoe off, wiggle my big toe to get some blood flow back into it. And you know, the rest of the six, seven K that I did after that was fine. And I didn't run into that problem again. Now this knit upper is stretching. So that first run, it was brutally tight, but within the first 15 to 20 K in this shoe, the upper has definitely loosened up. I would still call it a tight upper, tighter than maybe I want for a trainer, though it is a performance trainer, so it's kind of okay. But the knit upper is definitely stretching out. I could see if I put in another 40K, I have about 40K into this shoe right now. If I put another 40 or even 80K, the upper is going to stretch to the point where it's probably not going to be a problem. But beware, this shoe's probably going to fit you very tight in the midfoot. You may think it's width, but I really don't think it's width. I just think it's the volume of the supper. There's not enough volume here, but it will stretch. Give it time, it will stretch. If you love the feel of this shoe, if you love running this shoe, it probably be worth letting it stretch out and your foot should be fine. Otherwise with the upper, we have the standard Hoka kind of elf heel Achilles flare thing that's over here. There is a lot of padding back here. It's not the most padded thing, but the heel lockdown is fine. I do think this is a little bit of a narrow heel, but for me, for my foot, it's fine. The tongue is gusseted. It's nice. It stays in place. Um, it looks like it's stretchy, but it's not. The eyelet chain is super simple. So once you get your foot in here and you get used to how tight it is in the midfoot, getting the lockdown, getting your foot to stay in place is fine. So give it some time. Let your foot adjust. It probably will stretch out. It'll probably feel natural, but otherwise the shoe fits Okay, I would still say true to size in this one. Moving to the midsole of the shoe, that's the other thing that says I'm a Hoka. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, traditionally Hoka's foams have been not the most durable. They would pack out after, I don't know, 50, 60 miles in my experience. Or if you're doing a run over 10 miles, once you got to about the seven or eight mile mark in that run, the foam, the meta rocker, all the technologies in the midsole of that Hoka would just feel like it was flattening out. It just pancaked out. Now, when I first put this shoe on out of the box, it felt lively, it felt bouncy, it felt rolly. And that's a combination of really two things. The midsole foam in this shoe is a new supercritical EVA foam. It's a one piece supercritical EVA midsole. There's no plates in this. It's just pure foam. That's a change from the Mach 5, which was a dual layer setup of foams. This is just one simple piece of supercritical EVA in this midsole. And out of the box, it was fun, it was lively, it was rolly. The meta rocker, which is this heel to toe uh, rocker, or as Hoka's always call it, a camber. Now that's the wrong term, but they come from skiing. So if you ski, you understand camber. This is a reverse camber in Hoka lexicon. Um, it's a rocker. It's a nice rolly sensation. It runs and feels like a Hoka. If you like Hoka's, you're gonna be very familiar with that feeling. But after about 20K, I did notice that the meta rocker was a little less apparent in the shoe and the foam was just a little less bouncy, a little less fun. The last run I did in this shoe was a 10 mile or 16K run. And you know, like clockwork around the eight mile mark, I noticed this shoe was just feeling a little less lively, a little less rolly. I wouldn't say it was packing out. It definitely was not what I remember from Hoka EVAs from four years ago, but that was only after about 40K running and only on a 16K run. It shouldn't, I shouldn't start feeling those things this soon in the life of the shoe. So I have some big reservations about the longevity of this shoe. What's this shoe going to feel like in 40 more K, 80 more K, 100 more K? What's this shoe going to feel like at 100 miles or 160 K? I don't know, but I don't have high, high hopes at the moment because I think this super critical foam, the super criticalness, the airiness of this, of this foam is the thing that's probably going to be the end of it. I think that's just going to make this foam a little less durable um, than it really should be. And that's a big, that's a bit of a problem. Another little detail about the midsole of the shoe is really on the outsole of it. So two things about the outsole. 
One, it's a full rubber outsole. Now, this is not the first Hoka to have a full rubber outsole, but it's the first Hoka I've ever run in that has a full rubber outsole. And I got to give them props here. I got to give them credit here because the feel of a Hoka is still here, even with all this rubber on the outsole. Now, one of the reasons I loved running in Hokas and I stuck with all the other issues I had with them is because I really have always liked the feel of a rubberized EVA uh, outsole. I like how compliant, how soft that feels. And that's why I stuck with Hokas for so long. But I can say that this shoe, even with all this rubber on the bottom, does still feel like a Hoka, but I'm getting better durability. And I think that's the other interesting thing about the midsole here is this decoupled groove down the middle. What that's doing is capturing your foot, no matter where you're landing, centering it, getting it on this nice sort of wide platform, because this is a very wide platform of a midsole. And that's another signature Hoka thing. And it's also a signature mock thing. And it just centers the foot and allows you to roll forward. It really puts the meta rocker into action, which is great. So even with all of this rubber, and I think the rubber is really wearing nicely, so it's a nice rubber, this shoe runs and feels like a Hoka. And one of the criticisms of the Mach 5 was that there was just very low durability. Now, from an outsole standpoint, I think the durability of the shoe is going to be very well. But like I said, I don't know how durable this midsole foam will actually be. Overall, the ride of the shoe is nice. It's fun. I like how simple and lightweight this shoe is. I like the fact that it is so streamlined. I like simple shoes. I like simple shoes that are fun to run in. Even with the fit stuff that's stretching out, even with the midsole concerns, it's still a fun shoe to run in. I do find it firmer than I thought, especially for a super critical EVA. But again, I don't. that firmness is not going to stick around. One thing that has really changed about this midsole is there has been a break in. It definitely is not as firm as it was out of the box. And I think that's one of the criticisms of the shoe is that people are finding it a little bit too firm on that first run. Stick with it. It will soften up. It may soften up too much, but it's definitely going to soften up. I would not call this a soft shoe, but it's definitely a cushioned shoe. And there is a lot of foam in this shoe. But overall, it's a simple, lightweight, fun shoe to run in. But that's also kind of the problem with it. This is a performance trainer. I don't think I would consider this a daily trainer. There's just, the fit's too off. I worry about this foam. The outsole definitely can handle it, but I think something like a Clifton is probably a better everyday trainer. Just that's standard sort of a lot of easy running because this shoe doesn't really want to go easy. And for a daily trainer, I think you want a shoe that's capable of running slow. This is not the shoe for that. This is a performance trainer that wants to go fast. It wants to get closer to your marathon pace, maybe a little bit faster than that. But that's also the problem. As a performance trainer that's this simple, no carbon, no nylon plate, no nothing in this shoe, it's competing with a lot of amazing shoes in this space. Shoes that come to mind that would compete directly with this are the Adidas Boston 12 or the ASICS Nova Blast 4, or any of the super trainers that are out there. It's a very competitive space for a shoe like this. I think the closest competitor to this shoe would be, to me, the ASICS Nova Blast 4. And the Nova Blast 4, I think, is just a more engaging ride, and it's a more consistent ride. I've had my issues with FF Blast Plus foam from ASICS, but FF Blast Plus Eco Foam, is, I'm finding it's very, very consistent, much more consistent than I think this foam will be. So for that kind of cushion performance running where maybe I want to pick it up a little bit, I'm probably going to pick the Nova Blast 4. And the Nova Blast 4 is going to do the slower, easier, sort of max cushion shuffling easy recovery run better than this shoe will, will any day. Now, the New Balance Rebel V4 is the other shoe a lot of people are comparing this with. I'm going to say it right now, this is a much, much better shoe than the Rebel V4. I will be reviewing the Rebel V4. I will get to it soon. I've got a lot of other stuff that I want to get out before I get to that shoe. But the comparison between those shoes, it's not a comparison. This is the better shoe. But still, I don't know. If you love Hoka's, you're probably going to really like this update. I think it's a great update. I think it's modernized and refreshed this shoe. It feels it feels modern. It runs modern, but it still feels like a Hoka. So if you're a Hoka faithful and you really love Hokas, I think you're going to love this shoe. Yeah, I can see where this slots in with 
a Clifton on one side as sort of your daily trainer and up to the CLO X1 or the Rocket X2 as your racer. You put a CLO Road in there somewhere. You've got a nice little rotation for someone who really loves Hoka fits and Hoka foams. But if you're kind of on the fence about Hoka, I don't think this is going to change your opinion. If you don't like Hoka's, this is definitely not going to change your opinion. It's a fun, simple, lightweight shoe, but there's a lot of other options out there and there's probably some that are better for you. This shoe is going to stay in my little rotation because I do find it fun to run in. I think maybe I've been a little harsh on it in this review, but overall, I think it's a fun shoe to run in. I appreciate the lightweightness. I appreciate the simplicity of the shoe, but even if this was a shoe that I completely loved, I still probably wouldn't run in it all that often. But I am going to keep it in my rotation because I'm curious about how durable this foam really is and I want to see where it begins to break down. And I'm pretty confident it is going to break down. But I'm probably only going to be able to run in this shoe maybe once or twice a month. Because when I look at a performance trainer and I want to go and do a tempo run, I'm not going to pick this. I have a lot of other options for that. If I want a cushioned um, sort of daily trainer, I've got better options for that. And if I want a cushioned rolly shoe, I've got the Nova Blast 4. That's going to win over this shoe any run. So for me, it's a fun shoe. It's a simple shoe. I appreciate that. I think it's actually a pretty good looking shoe. I think this is one of the best Hoka's um, aesthetically that I've ever seen. That doesn't really matter, but Hoka's are very polarizing in how they look. So I'm going to keep running in this shoe. It might take a while for me to get it to even 50 miles to come back with sort of a durability check-in, but I will come back with a durability check-in on this shoe. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you find this content useful, consider subscribing. You'll see more content from me pop up in your feed. If not, drop a like on this video because it'll help this channel continue to grow, which I always appreciate. And with that, I'll catch you in the next one.